I am not going to do that again. Right there is a dang plaque. It says, in memory of Randy Rhodes, well, his birth dates, what is it, 452 to 482, something like 54 to 82. What was he, 24, 27? Whatever it is, I'm not going to figure it out now. And then it gives a scripture. It's online, you can see it online. I have a big picture of it at home. But this is it, and you can sit there and think about Randy. You can think about your life and what where you're going. If you're a musician, are you taking it seriously? Like Randy, you take that instrument as serious as Randy Rhodes did. I mean, is that your life? Your whole life is devoted to guitar. And to not just metal guitar, because that's where I'm caught. I'm pretty much caught in metal guitar. I love it. I love heavy metal guitar. And that's a style. It's like classical. It's like flamenco. It's like whatever you want to call it. You know, it's like v banjo playing. I can't... Banjo players can't play metal guitar. Metal guitar players, some of them can play banjo. I mean, you got John Five who's doing the chicken picking thing, but... I can do that, kind of. But, you know, when, if you get too much crammed in, you know, metal should be metal. Metal shouldn't be everything. I don't like this cross-breeding metal. True metal is true metal. And that's what you got to figure out. What are you going to do? Now, Randy, of course, was influenced by classical a lot. And so he worked that classical into his style, which gave him that style. Now... Betty Van Halen, he had a whole different, he was self-taught. And he was coming through, like, more like me, like aggression. He wanted that, rah, rah, that, he wanted his guitar to growl and to scream and all that. And Dimebag was a combination of Randy and Eddie. But Randy was a definite in his own class. He was not in any way copying Eddie Van Halen. They were contemporaries. And Randy had his classically influenced metal, which I think is a lot classier than, say, the crude, animalistic <laughs> Van Halen, which is incredible, too, though. I mean, if you listen to the first Van Halen album and you listen to all that stuff, that Eddie Van Halen at first was just, he was out there to prove to the world that he was something, because he knew he was different, I and mean, he, he was on to something. And he was blowing away everybody. And then within the one, what, one year, two years, not two years of touring, maybe with Ozzy, and uh, Randy was just as big and just as good. And he had his own to completely total different sound. He had a stereo sound. It was huge. Randy and Eddie had that other sound that was uh, all overdriven, but it was warm. Randy's was more effects driven, which he wanted to eventually work away from, and that's why he kind of liked classical because it was just the man and the and the instrument, and that's it. No effects, classical. It's all in your talent, and he could do it. And he was writing. He was getting ready to. He was starting to write that. Uh, thing that he was going to turn into UCLA and see if he could get a scholarship there, not a scholarship, but go into UCLA and as a classical guitarist and then uh, go back to teaching, I think. But eventually, I think it overwhelmed him. It went way too quick and you either got to be crazy, stupid nuts, drug taking, greedy, scum like the Osbournes to get through that or you don't or you somehow do it by sheer will, like Rudy Sarzo, and bail when the ship's stink, starting to sink or get too crazy, you jump off. Go on to something that's a little more tame. But even Rudy went from Ozzy to Kevin Dubrow. But he knew Kevin Dubrow. He, Kevin Dubrow wasn't crazy like that all the time. He started to get crazy like that all the time because he thought he had to be. Just like... Alice thought he had to be Alice all the time. And Elvis thought he had to be Elvis all the time. No one can be that. No one can be that stage person all the time. 
Randy didn't want to be Randy Rhodes all the time. He just wanted to be Randy from Burbank that likes to play guitar. And I think he needed a break. And he was getting mad, madder and madder at having to play Sabbath stuff and that the record company was going to make him do Speak of the Devil, which was stupid. The dumbest move ever a record company made. But, you know, it, people ate it up. And I'd have definitely bought it, you know, for Randy. I bought it anyway, so I like Brad Gillis. But Randy would have been much better. They should have kept Randy's songs, Sabbath songs on there. I don't know. You can sit here and see, think a lot about his career, what happened, what didn't happen, what could have happened, what you could do. Are you taking it serious or is it just a pastime? Me, I took it dead serious for 17 years. Nothing mattered except for music. I just live, breathe, sleep, eat music and girls and booze but mainly music and you know what do I got to show for it a CD a couple CDs but the latest one is the Fatal Attraction Immortal and there I'm playing bass and the trick-or-treat stuff will never come out because Mandy's a goofball and so my guitar playing which is Everybody, but I, I'd always get, oh, he got such a great tone. Well, I worked on my tone. And your rhythm is really good. Well, that was Randy's doing, rhythm. He said, you got good rhythm, you got to really have a good rhythm. That's something a lot of people, they try to be, you know, rip into leads before they know how to do rhythm. And it just stuck with me. So I practiced rhythm. And then I didn't even bother with leads. And then for a while in the 90s, no one bothered with leads. Now they're back. And to me, leads are just pure aggression. I have to slow down. If I'm gonna write a melody, you gotta put a melody in there somehow, fine, I can do it or make it fit into the song, but there's Randy. And there's where you can sit and think about him. At the Lutheran Church here in Burbank, at the, really Glendale, California, or Little Armenia, and Burbank, California, in the corner of Alameda and Glen Oaks. Little Alameda, Little Armenia, and Bigger Armenia. It's all Armenia. Randy would be shocked if he came back and saw what Burbank was like now. He'd think someone dropped him in Eastern Europe or something. It's different. I can't wait to leave again. But there you go. Enough about me. That's Randy. This, and that's where this is the church where he was. His body was. His torn and burned body was. It's not a way for anybody to go. It's no way for no sons. No son of anybody to go that way. It's sad. But enough of the sad. Just think about happy. Just think about all the stuff he did do and the guitars and the licks and the way of playing and the way he looked. He didn't look like a bum. He looked like Randy Rose. He looked like a rock star. He had that rock star vibe and he didn't even... He might have tried at first, but he didn't have to try after a while. After a while, you kind of just take it on if you have it. If you don't, you'll never get it. So don't that try. <laughs> But that's it. That's uh, your short version of the, uh, I think I got everything I did last time. And this is part one, two, three, part three of the Randy Rhodes field trip. It's actually Easter Sunday, uh, April 31st, 2013. And Randy left this March 19th, 1982. All right, that's it. Hope you guys had fun. If you have any questions or any comments, go ahead and, and put them out there. If not, if you're just going to be a boring old fuddy-duddy, just watch the videos. I hope you have a good time, all right? And if, you want, if there's any other requests, I'll try to get to them. I am, might put on, you know, like a part four with some pictures of the... Of the... Uh, 
where he's buried, where the mausoleum is, and some pictures of him and stuff like that that I got, all right? And my guitars. And then next week, when I did my tribute, uh, it was called uh, Blizzard, and I got a guy named Ruben that can do Randy perfectly. And he was Randy. I played bass. Uh, my friend George Carlston, who did the video stuff for my other band, and he's been a friend of mine for 30 something years. He was Aussie. And he looked, he did the part good. I mean, looks wise and the way he acted, he did it great. But George is a singer. Ozzy farts out of his throat, so there's a big difference. It was hard for a guy that can actually sing to try to sound like Ozzy, but he tried. He did a good enough job. And at times he sounded too good. So. And then on drums, it just varied. There's a guy named Ruben. There was a guy named something. And another guy named Chris, I think. I don't know. It went on for a few years. 92, 93, 94, 95. And then we killed it. Because it got too big. It was starting to be like, Oh, wait, I want you to play out here. I want you to play here. I want you to play here. I want it to be a tribute two times a year for Randy and his fans. But... Everything always gets blown out. But the last show he did was totally sold out. The club was packed. I mean, they were screaming at Ruben and George or Randy and Ozzy. And they were having a great time. I mean, the whole club was just... And we were gassing them with the wrong smoke. There's two types of smoke. There's outdoor smoke for special effects. And there's indoor smoke that's water-based. We were using oil-based outdoor smoke in a little club, and we were gassing these poor people to death. They could barely breathe after we got out of there. But it was cool. That was the last show, so we didn't have any lawsuits. All right, questions or anything, feel free to ask. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.